Hi. Hey, today I wanted to just quickly show you and maybe give you some ideas. It's a beautiful day out here, and I thought I better just give you some ideas right now on how to design your winter greenhouse. And that's what this is. As you can see right here, um, this is attached onto the side of the house, and I don't have an overhang. And by not having an overhang, it makes it so that when the sun uh, is in the summer, you're still getting, in the summer, you barely get a slice of uh, light down in there. So really, this is a winter greenhouse. Um, so it's southern exposed side, and I'm going to give you some ideas of possibilities, what you can do with yours when you design your winter greenhouse. So I'm going to go inside um, and show you some of the things that we've done in here, and maybe you can get some ideas for yourself on how you would maybe even improve on it. Um, okay, let's go inside. Okay. As we go inside, you can see how it's laid out. Um, with mine, you could have this coming off your home, straight off of it. We've got a half basement in ours, so therefore, excuse the mess in here, I'm in the middle of a lot of projects. Um, you could have it, um, see we come out of our home there, so you can open the door and get the heat, uh, if you want, from the greenhouse in the winter. Um, and it goes into the basement. That's just how we designed this one. You could have it coming straight out. Originally, it was to be not in a basement, but on a level home. All of the kales and, and spinaches and greens that you see right here, um, these big ones that are just in front of us, they transplant really easy. So we just pulled these out of our regular greenhouse to drop them in here so they'd weather really nice through the winter and we'd be able to have some nice greens. Um, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to slip over and show you the greenhouse with this system And you can do it any way you'd want but with this system we have a greenhouse and I'll show you it Okay, there's the greenhouse right there and we pulled it in from there. It is uh, November the 8th November 9th, so We've been getting some really cold weather in here. We do, where we're located, get 30 below, well, one, one year we got 39 below zero here. And it did not freeze inside here. So we just transferred our stuff into here. Once we did, it just went crazy. Um, it was a little bit cold in the other greenhouse. I'm gonna show you how we have this. Originally, when I designed this, against this far wall, again, excuse the mess in here, against this far wall, I did have barrels of water. And the barrels of water were intended so that as the sun uh, gets further, you know, down, say, on the 22nd of December, when you have winter solstice, you're going to have the sun really hitting up against the back wall back in here, and it would heat up the barrels of water. It took up they're 50 gallon barrels of water. It took up too much space, so I'm going to show you what we did instead. Okay, um, what we did is this was a dirt floor, and what we did is we decided to make some advantage, take advantage of uh, the heat absorption onto this brick. So we used pavers, and in here, I'll show you what we did. It's pretty easy. We took plastic. And if you come up here a little bit closer, you can see the plastic. I lined the base of this with plastic. Um, so there's a plastic underneath this whole entire floor. And then I put, um, I put some, some sand right here. So the, the sand is about two inches thick right down in this area here. And then we put pavers over the top. So plastic under the sand, what that does is it keeps so the water... The moisture in here, um, or the moisture in the ground, doesn't heat sink through the sand. Usually it's pretty dry in here. Yes, you spill some stuff onto these pavers, it sinks into the sand, but it does dry back out, so it's dry. And what this does is it, it, it keeps the heat right here, and, and sand is an incredible insulator. It's like when you go to the beach. 
you walk across the sand and it's really, really hot on the surface and you quickly dig your feet into the sand and it's nice and cool. It does the same thing here. And what that does is it makes this heat, when this heats up our brick through the night, it sits and comes back into the room in here. If you had it directly onto wet dirt, it would sink it down into the ground and you'd lose a lot of your heat into the ground. So sand is a great idea for doing this. That way I eliminated all of my water barrels, 50 gallon barrels, and yet I still have the same result with lot, no, no loss of space. And then I'm going to show you what these grill boxes look like right next. Okay, right here you can see our grill boxes that we put in, and those are a 2x10 grill box. Um, it worked really good along here we did two by ten originally we did uh the two by sixes down on the end there they we found we didn't have enough uh dirt in them it's just you, you don't have to water them as often when they're a little bit deeper they're still good but we uh we lined the inside of them with a plastic that's made for greenhouses so it lasts a long time and it won't rot your wood out I'm going to show you what we did underneath here to uh, for drainage. In the center of it, let me I'll show you here in just one second. Okay, here is the bottom of the grow box right here, and here's my hand. So you can see, well, let's see, this one's a four inch cap. So this is a four inch cap. It's about a four and a half inch hole that I drilled. But if you can see right here, this plastic, is the greenhouse plastic and right underneath it all I did was bend it so that it kind of came down right here and then the water will drip down into a bucket we've been using a five gallon bucket and what's interesting is you get your compost tea out of this so down in the bottom of it you'll get compost tea and then you just pour it back up into the into the grow box and you're not not losing any minerals now um, eventually Later in the winter here, I'm going to be doing an experiment with this compost tea from these boxes, which is all organic. And I'm going to be using, I'm going to be dumping it into this 4-inch pipe. Um, so it, these will drain into the 4-inch pipe, and the 4-inch pipe will go all the way to the end here and drain into a big holding container. And I'll be able to automate it all. So it's all automatic, and I don't even have to water it. But that'll be later. I'm going to show... Uh, possibly some other ideas for doing something like this in, in uh, some future videos. But for now, all of your uh, your liquids pour in here. It's very clean. All you do is pour it back out of here. And this is, um, let me show you here, that one is empty. So I'm going to come over to this one right in here. I think there's some liquid down in this, yeah. So you can see right in here, there's your compost tea. Which is, you can see the color in there. And it's, it's very good, it's all organic, and I could use stuff like this for uh, my hydroponics, which I'm planning on, on doing a little bit later. Um, with some, with some uh, I'm going to do a floating raft system with it, and then also a rail system. Okay, again, here's the same thing right here. In this box, it drops down in here, into the bucket, then I'm able to pour that back up into the, into the grill box. Very clean way of doing it. Okay, if I can get this, all right, <laughs> it's not wanting to go on hold. Okay, as you can see, uh, transplanting these kales and collards, there it's a little bit, well, I didn't water it real well, so some of these are showing a little bit of wilting, but you can get the main idea. Um, they'll perk up a little later today. I just watered them. But you get an idea that you can qu pull these out of a greenhouse that you have, drop them in here in a winter greenhouse, and you'll have incredible greens for green drinks all winter. Um, right here on the side of your house. Now, you can see how the pavers work in here. It's really a clean system. We come in here with our, our socks, and it's clean. You just vacuum it up. It's a clean system. Um, here's another creative idea that we did is we pulled all of our, uh, um, this was pulled out of the greenhouse. It was pretty beaten down and a couple weeks ago and I threw it into some buckets and you can see this is the cabbage. Cabbage makes some incredible, you can pull these greens and it just 
we'll have greens for our green drinks from the cabbage uh, as well. And then this right here is our greens from uh, uh, turnips. And if you start picking the leaves on the turnip, it doesn't, you know, I've found that it goes, the leaves, you, it doesn't grow a bulb, it just grows big leaves. And so you're able to just pull those and they taste a lot like cabbage. And they're really good in green drinks. Um, let's see here. And then anyway, this is kind of the main idea. I'm trying to think what else might be helpful when you're putting one of these, uh, adding one onto your house. The main idea is, uh, well, not the main idea, but one of the big ideas for uh, heat retention is is these pavers and putting sand underneath them. And we have had, you know, 39 to below zero, and it does not freeze in here. Tomatoes do pretty good, but this year we're experimenting with all these greens. Just pulled them out of that greenhouse, and you can see they just transplanted and grew way better than they did in the greenhouse uh, outside. So it's just it's just a good way of doing it and we hope that you enjoyed this video um, and maybe some of the ideas and I will uh, add to it if I see that I missed anything with it. All right. Thanks. God bless. See ya. Bye.